how to release the clutch on your bike correctly. Well, just don't dump it, right? Finita la commedia. Or not. Surprisingly, there are a lot of nuances in clutch control, which can really turn an OK rider into a really good one. So in this video, we'll learn some tricks, which will significantly improve our clutch control. No more stalling, no more problems with shifting, and no more duck walking. Let's start! To make sure we're all on the same page here, at first let's discuss what we should know about clutch to operate it correctly. Clutch connects our engine and gearbox and allows us to engage and disengage them as we see fit. And more importantly, it allows us to do it in a controlled way. We can do it in a smooth way or we can do it really fast, depending on circumstances. And we do it with our clutch lever. If we release it slowly, the engine and gearbox also engage slowly, and vice versa. If we release the lever pretty fast, engine and gearbox also engage very fast. Now, if you pull in the clutch all the way and start slowly releasing it, you'll notice that it doesn't start to pull you forward immediately. You have to release the lever up to a certain point, where the clutch just starts to engage and pulls you forward. This point is called clutch engagement point or clutch biting point. From this point, the more you release it, the more rigidly connected your engine and gearbox become. When you release the clutch all the way out, your engine and gearbox are rigidly connected, their speed is equal. And this whole gray area of the clutch, when it is not fully engaged, is called the friction zone. In the friction zone, your engine is connected to the gearbox through the clutch, but the clutch slips and transfers only part of the torque from the engine to the rest of transmission. And the more you release the clutch, the less it slips, and more torque from engine goes to the rear wheel. Ok, now when we know all the necessary theory, let's learn what it all means from a practical standpoint. Above all, it means that our clutch lever is not a simple on-off switch. In fact, it is a pretty precise instrument, which in turn requires some precision from us too. When operating the clutch, precision matters. We are literally talking millimeters here. And there are a few tricks which can improve our precision. First of all, there is a proper setup and adjustment. You wouldn't believe how often I have to help adjust my students their levers on their bikes. Your lever adjustment is really one of the first things you should do with your bike, it helps a lot. On most bikes you can adjust the levers up and down like this, by loosening their clamping screws. Once you've done it, sit on your bike in your usual riding position, put your hand on a lever like this and level it properly. In my experience, the majority of people find it most comfortable when their hand makes a straight line with their arm. That's usually a good starting point. You personally may find it more comfortable if your hand is tilted a little bit upwards or downwards. For example, I like my wrist bent just slightly downwards. But in most cases, the straight line works just fine. This proper adjustment alone can significantly improve the amount of control you have over your clutch. On some bikes, you can also have another lever adjustment like this, which sets up how far you have your lever from the handlebar. To adjust it, push the lever forward like this and then set the desired setting. Again, from my experience with students, the bigger hands you have, the further usually you want to to adjust your clutch. Plus, if you like to use one or two fingers on your clutch instead of four, you also may want to set the clutch further from the handlebar to avoid trapping your fingers under the lever. Speaking of fingers, I get this question quite a lot. Uh, how many fingers should I use on my clutch? And should I keep them on clutch all the time? Or only when I need to use it? There is no straight answer. Uh, really, it depends. Generally, if you ride a lot of off-road or making wheelies, you probably already noticed that you want one, maximum two uh, fingers on your clutch lever. Because uh, otherwise uh, there is a lot of force going through here and uh, you 
get an arm pump. But in most riding conditions on paved roads, it really doesn't make that much difference. For street riding you can just go with whatever is comfortable for you on your specific bike. Me, for example, on Vulcan, which has a bit heavier clutch, I like to use all four fingers. On 690 Duke, which has feather-like clutch, I usually use only one or two fingers. As far as keeping fingers on levers, I usually keep them in heavy traffic or while lane splitting, when you have to be constantly ready to react. When just riding down the road, I personally find it a bit awkward for my hands, so I don't do it. My point is, uh, this stuff is more of a matter of personal preference. There is no absolute right way to do it. Okay, nice. Now, when we discussed proper setup and number of fingers which uh, we want to operate our clutch with, uh, now let's see how we can actually operate it. If you have some experience with doing slow speed exercises or practicing fast takeoffs, you could probably notice that your clutch acts in a non-linear way. At first, when it just starts to bite, you can release it pretty fast and bike doesn't really react very fast. But when you release the clutch more and more, at some point it starts to pull you forward really strong. And now you suddenly have to be more careful and release it much slower. So, to take off confidently, you need to release your clutch in a different rate, pretty fast at first and much more slower at the end of the clutch travel. And to complicate matters even further, your clutch behaves differently when you apply throttle. You remember that clutch transfers the part of engine power to the rear wheel. Well, if you open your throttle, engine starts to produce more power and the part of this power also becomes bigger. So now, when you release your clutch the same amount, your bike is accelerating faster. So much is going on, sounds terrible, but there is a way to fix all this, and it's called a stop and go exercise. The goal here is to make your bike stop for a moment completely, and then take off again smoothly, without putting your feet down or stalling. First, it forces you to use your clutch in conjunction with throttle and rear brake. You have to remember to pull in the clutch when you apply brake. Release brake when you release the clutch and keep your throttle slightly open to prevent your bike from stalling. It may sound too simple, but remember that everything happens pretty fast, so you have to think quickly. And second, this exercise forces you to release the clutch in the right way fast at first and slower later. If you release the clutch too slow, your bike will lose its balance and you'll have to put your foot down. If you release the clutch too fast, you'll either stall or jerk your bike. Very nice exercise, uh, doesn't need any cones or anything else to set it up and it really doesn't need a lot of room either. You can do it even on small parking lots. I already described this exercise in detail in a lot of my videos, so I'll just uh, leave a link in the description, I won't go over it again. Ok, if you have any questions left, please ask them in the comment section. I usually answer them all. And you know, please like, share and subscribe to feed my ego. <laughs> As always, uh, thank you for watching and hope to see you soon. Bye.